And your mercies, Lord, thank you, Jesus. they endure forever. Forever. Who is like unto you, O God? None. You alone are God. Majestic, glorious. We worship and honor you today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that we begin another year in you and with you. And Lord, we pray that you will lead us on this journey of faith, love, and hope. Cause each one of us, and also, Lord, as a local church body and even the body of Christ, to abound in hope by the power of your spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Be strong in the behalf of your people. Be mighty and be glorious. Show up, Lord. Show up in your might and majesty. We step aside and we say, Lord, you show up. Be God. Let your name be magnified. In Jesus' name. And the house of God said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to thank the worship team for being a good sport uh, to help us learn the song and sing that song you are God today praise the Lord sister Jackie yes yeah give the Lord praise for your life keep that spirit hallelujah glory to God hallelujah Thank you, Lord Jesus. The theme that God has given to us for this year is hope. The word is hope. And our theme is abounding in hope. Abounding in hope. The full revelation of it is abounding in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Can you say hallelujah? Praise the Lord. And so this first Sunday of this year, I want to begin with a message on hope. God, our hope. If you turn with me to Psalm 75, excuse me, Psalm 71 and verse 5. Psalm 71 and verse 5. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. <laughs> Isn't God good? Yes. His good and his mercies endure forever. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So who's your hope? God is our hope. Glory to Jesus. Psalm 71 and verse 5. For thou art my hope. The psalmist says God is his hope. Who is the hope of the Christian? God. For you are my hope. Psalm 71, verse 5. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. So it's very clear who his hope is. The Lord God. Amen. Thou art my trust from my youth. Hallelujah. So young people, let God be your hope and the one in whom you trust. Hallelujah. And God proved himself faithful to the psalmist in his youth 
throughout his lifetime and he's speaking now at a point in his life where chronologically, age-wise, he's not in his youth. Yes, age-wise. Obviously, by the power of the Spirit, he still has the vitality of God in his life. Amen? Amen. But you can see that he's talking about a certain time period. He started from a certain time, now he's at a different time. A different time is not the exact time, same time as the time he began. All right, verse 5 again. For thou art my hope, O Lord God. Thou art my trust from my youth. So I started in my youth, but at this time of speaking, he is not in his youth. The same youth age, chronological age, as when he started. Right? Help me, te help me teach this and make it easy for me. Because I know with us charismatics, somebody's already thinking, but I'm in my youth. Meantime, you're 120. When you're 120, you are not in your youth, chronologically speaking. Mm -hmm. You are not. I know you're people of faith, but 120 is not age-wise time, chronologically. It's not youth. Amen? But you have the spirit and the vitality of the Holy Spirit in you even at 120 and so in that sense you have the youthfulness the zeal the life of god Amen. praise the lord Amen. so we have to be people of faith but we have to also be people of intelligence amen. amen the bible is a very intelligent book it is not something that you know i you know you just take a leap of faith and there's no intelligence those teachings they are not correct they're not accurate they're not accurate at all it's just that from a natural perspective, uh, because our mind is limited, we cannot see and understand how God does it in the spirit realm. But in the spirit realm, the way that God moves in the spirit realm, it is perfect. Amen. Amen. And it makes perfect sense in the realm of the spirit. Because in the realm of the spirit, that is how things work. It is not, there is no chaos. It is not disorderly. Praise the Lord. So even if you're 150, you can be in your youth in the sense that you can have the vitality of God. You can have the power of God. You can have power, divine power, that energizes your natural power. You understand that? The Bible says in the book of Romans, Romans 8, it says that the spirit of God in us will make alive or quicken us by his indwelling presence, his indwelling spirit. Let me just take you there and show you that scripture. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. As part of this message, you, just want, you need to see this. Romans 8, 11. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken you. Quicken means make alive. Make alive, revitalize, re-energize, put divine energy, spiritual dynamism into you, supernatural power. Quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Notice the Bible admits that our body is mortal. If you are a person of faith, like you are in the Word of Faith movement, you should not be afraid to accept that your body is mortal. It is biblical. You understand? We have to actually look at it that way to see God's power at work. If it was, if it was never subject to mortality, you would not see the difference between mortality and immortality. You understand? Okay, let me give you another example. Let me give you another example. How many know the scripture that says that? Do you know the difference between uh, just the Bible, even in nature, but the Bible speaking this about nature? That talking about a lion and a, a young lion, comparing the strength of a lion and a young lion when it comes to hunting for food, chasing the prey. 
you know, the old lion and the young lion. The old lion has experience, but the old lion does not have the energy that the young lions have to go to hunt. Everybody with me now? Okay. Now, God says, even the young lions, the young lions that have strength and power, God says, even the young lions, the time could come that the young lions will lack for food. What is God implying? God is saying that strength, natural strength, human strength, no matter how powerful it is, has a limit, has a limitation. You get to a point where it does not matter how powerful you are, you'll encounter or face something that you cannot, your power cannot overcome. And you would need divine power. You understand that? On Friday, we prayed about that because God gave me a revelation on Friday morning. I saw a person, what would represent a strong person, laying down. They were strong, they were healthy, there was nothing wrong with them. They were laying down. Uh, there was a man, just so that I understand this, there was a man, had no shirt on, so I could see his chest, his biceps, I could see his upper body, and he was very strong. It's almost like if you look at uh, a bust that a sculptor has uh, made, you know, like the Greek sculptors of, a, of the male, a strong male. You know, the Greeks were like that. They were very competitive. They gave us Olympic games. They competed about everything. Poetry, they will compete. Running, they will compete. You know, beauty, they will compete. So when their artists and their painters and the sculptors would draw or paint a human being, they would paint what in their minds signified power and strength. So when they draw a male or sculpt a male figure, you could actually see the veins, you could see their biceps popping up. That was the kind of person I saw. And then the power of God came into that person and lifted the person up and caused the person to stand on their feet. Now what God revealed to me on Friday morning was this, that even those who are strong still need divine energy. It wasn't God wasn't speaking to me about the weak. We know the weak need God's strength. But God was telling me that even those who are strong, he says, I'll strengthen them. Amen. 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 You understand that? Amen. Somebody is penniless. Somebody is in abject poverty. God will deliver them. And God will lift them up this year. Praise the Lord. Amen. But God is revealing to me that even those who have, God will give them more, and you give it in such a way that they would know God did it. Amen. So I pray that you will abound in this expectation Amen. of receiving divine visitation, yeah. divine energy, mm -hmm. divine infusion of power, the, the hand of God coming into your finances, into your health, into every aspect of your life. Even for those who have, may you abound in what you have in excess so that this year all that was in your heart last year and in previous years to do for people you would be able to do that somebody receive it in jesus name amen so the lord my brothers and sisters the lord showed me not somebody who was weak god will help the weak but he showed me somebody who was strong and god's power brother tom god's power lifted the person up so I'm watching this, I'm like, wow. And God said to me that this year, I will give my people divine energy. Mm -hmm. This is what we are reading here. Because that, that person that I saw, as powerful as humans are, I mean, you know, uh, and I use this example on Friday. R remember Governor Schwarzenegger? Mm -hmm. Governor of California? Before he became a governor and actor and all that, he was a bodybuilder. And in bodybuilding competition, worldwide, he won seven times. To win once is a miracle. <laughs> he won seven times. I mean, that, that's amazing. You know? 
But even Arnold Schwarzenegger will grow old. You know? Man, this is what we should. You're all so quiet. I didn't say anything critical or sinful. It's just a matter of life. So if you can respond a little bit just so that I know I'm reaching you. Even, even the young who grow, right? Amen. This is not a curse. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. All of you will never grow old in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> praise Amen. God. We always get a response with that in every charismatic meeting. And some of the teachings, they are not biblical. And leaves people frustrated. Leave God out of the picture. I have come to tell you that God is our helper. Amen. Yeah. God is your defender. He will make the weak strong. And those who are strong, he will make them stronger by divine power. Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we need God. We need God. No matter how rich you are, how healthy you are, how whatever you are, you need God. And the church has to tell the world, show the world, we need salvation. Let God be your, the hope of your salvation. Not your money, not your position, not your political connections. Let God be the hope of your salvation. Praise the Lord. Hear me, born again believers who are buying a lot of guns, thinking that that is your salvation, you need to repent if you're a Christian. I'm talking to Christians in America now. You need to repent. Something has, you have been captured. You were running well. Please pay attention. Those of you here, you, some of you are looking at me like, what is pastor talking about? You have no idea. There are a lot of Christians following the teaching right now, thinking that there's going to be some kind of civil war, some kind of war in America. You don't know, am I, am I the only person who knows or has heard some of these things? If you've heard, just raise your hand so I know, oh, okay, all right, good. Well, Michelle, you're so quiet, I kind of felt for a moment I'm the only person who knows this. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. We're not going to have any civil war in America. It is not going to happen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. <laughs> No one human being in America is worth you and I fighting over. It will not happen in Jesus' name. Now let me talk to Christians who are buying all kinds of ammunition and food and you're going to store it up and you think you are wasting your money, you're wasting your time. I speak in the, with a prophetic anointing and I declare we're not going to have a civil war, we're not going to have clashes, we're not going to be fighting. It will not happen in Jesus' name. It will not happen. We are the people of God. Now this is not political. We stand for Christ. We stand for God. Where is your faith? What spirit are you operating in? Is it the spirit of love? Is it the spirit of unity? Or is it the spirit of fear? You're preparing for what? For war? In America? It will not happen. It will not happen. It will not happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are running well. Who has bewitched you? What spirit? Has bewitched you. What have you not believed? That you live in fear. And don't start. Don't even start to tell me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know in whom I have believed. Yes, yes. The Bible says. In the last days. Those who know their God. Shall be strong. Yes. And they shall do exploits. It's time to live for the kingdom of God. Christians. Not live for democratic or republican party. Or any party. Live for God. Amen. It's about God. The United States of America does not belong to Republicans. The United States of America does not belong to Democrats. It does not. It is, you, have, you call it united. The name itself starts with the word united. Praise God. So the spirit of the name will vomit any one party that tries to take over.
got to know your God. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Don't allow a spirit of fear to come into your heart. This year, don't allow any teachings that are not of God to stay in your heart. It's time for the weak to say, I am strong. The poor to say, I am rich. By the way, that was Joel 3, verse 10. Let the weak say, I am strong. Amen. Amen. The sick shall be healed. The oppressed shall be set free. Jesus said we should occupy till his, he, come, he comes. Jesus said to preach the gospel to everybody. He has not amended it. He has not suspended it because of whatever may be going on in our world. Amen. <laughs> God loves everybody. And God wants everybody saved. Republicans saved in America, Democrats saved in America, wherever you are in the world listening to this, the human system that you have as a Christian, you're not to allow that spirit to divide you. You have to live by the word of the living God. Amen. So come back. Get your soul back. In your patience, possess your soul. Take possession of your soul. Amen. Amen. Retrieve your soul. From the path of fear that Satan put you on. Don't let the things that you have been taught slip away from you. Slip through your fingers. That is Hebrews 12. Don't let them slip. Amen? Amen. All right. So, Romans 8, 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead. If he dwells in you, he will quicken your mortal body by his spirit. That means you make alive your body. So at 120, 130, 150, 100, 80, 70, 60, 50, whatever, 40, he will make alive your mortal body. And even the strong will be made stronger. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me add one more scripture about that. Giving strength to you. When the New Testament, yes. Hallelujah. Go to Ephesians 1. Let's just flow the Holy Spirit a little bit here. About, about power. Ephesians 1, please. Ephesians 1. Verse 19. No, let me, excuse me. Ephesians 1, let me read from 18. The eyes of your spirit, the eyes of your spirit or understanding being enlightened, your eyes should be enlightened, your spiritual eyes be enlightened, that you may know what is what? Hope. The hope of his calling. It's right into the Christians, one of the most powerful churches in, you know, in uh, uh, po powerful churches in the early church, local churches. In the early church was the church of Ephesus. Yet here he writes to them that they may know the hope of God's calling. Get to understand this. Become one with it. Become intimate with it. Let it take you over. Amen. 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 That you know the riches of the glory of God's inheritance in the saints. God has an inheritance in you. You have value. I said you have value. Yes. God has an inheritance in you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you have, you have to live by the word of God as Christians. People in the world, they're different. But when you become a Christian, th things like minority, you should stop thinking that way and stop talking that way. You are not minority. You can't be minority. When you are linked with Jehovah. He that is joined to God is one spirit. Amen. First Corinthians 6, 17. He that is joined to God is one spirit. When you start, when you think minority, that limits you. Amen. 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 And just, just for a fact, do you know in America, they call like black people minority? But when you think globally, black people are not actually minority. Yeah. Black people are more than anybody in the world. But they've got you believing you are a minority. Technically, figures, population, numbers, black people are not minority. They're not. <laughs> people believe all kinds of lies. Now, I'm even going beyond and I'm talking to you that you are a Christian. You are a child of God. Amen. 
You are the head and not the tail. Yes. You are above and not beneath. Yes. Stay there. But God says, yes, forces will like to dethrone you and pull you down. But a glorious high throne has been your place, your position from even before you were born and created. And what God has designed, let no man put us under. Amen. 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 You have to live by what God said. Amen. Whether you're white, you're black, you're brown, you're red, you're yellow, whatever they call you, you are a child of the living God. Amen. If anybody be in Christ, I mean, how can we just quote the word, but we don't believe it, we don't live it. If anybody be in Christ, he is a new creation. That's what God said. Now what do you say? You are a new creation. So find out who that new creation is. What that new creation possesses. Amen? What that new creation can do. What you have in Christ what you can do in Christ and where you are seated in Christ. Far above. Not above, but far above. When you have that mentality, you go for an interview, they offer you a certain amount, you say, no, I'm worth more. <laughs> I am worth more. And you are. You are. You're the best. You are the best. Read the Bible. Daniel and his friends, they were ten times smarter than the smartest of Babylon. You are the best. Mm -hmm. You have the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of understanding. Listen, the revelation of God and supernatural understanding is a lot higher than natural understanding. And in the spirit realm, the things of God make perfect sense in the spirit realm. If we we're operating on that level with that intelligence, it will make sense to us. But because we are operating on the, in the natural and not in the spiritual, the things of God are hidden from us. By the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will reveal to Christians the things of God. Things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, hearts have not perceived. God will reveal these things to us. God is your salvation. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. ah. mm -hmm. Ephesians 1. Verse 19. Something else he wants you to know. Know what? The exceeding, my God, exceeding greatness of his power. <laughs> Not the greatness, but exceeding Greatness of God's power toward us who believe. According to the working of his mighty power, 20, which he wrought in Christ, executed, implemented, did, operated in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above, not above, but far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. But you're going to have some false pastors, false prophets yeah. tell you you have generational spirits, ancestral curses, and you can't go over, a, you know, you cannot excel in life because you have family idols that are thrones in your family and they bamboozle you and deceive you with all these high sounding things which are actually all wrong. Because God says you are far above Amen. all principality. Hallelujah. All of them. Every power and every mind and every dominion. Amen. Amen. Two quick things I'm going to tell you now. Maybe you could get back to them later on, but they're part of this message that God brought to my mind, brought back to my attention. And uh, it relates to what I just said here, that you're far above all principality, all power, all might, that we need to look at, 
those who know them, to revisit them. They are this. One, God specializes in coming into the lives of the hopeless to change their lives and bless them in such a way that everybody would know that was God. Amen. Amen. And this is how you should this you should think. This should be your perspective and expectation. Expect God to show up in your life. Whatever you expect, whatever you hope for, know that God is your hope. God is the one in whom you trust and he will show up and he will do it for you. Because that is how God works and that is what he specializes in. Amen? All right, so the two quick examples one is Abraham. When God called Abraham, everybody paid attention to this. When God called Abraham, God called him from idolatry. Joshua 24. Joshua 24. And I believe verse 3. Give me verse 3, let's see. If it's not verse 3, it's verse 2. I know if Ishra is watching, she's going to type on my Facebook page. Dad, you missed the reference. <laughs> <laughs> so let me get it right. Before she put, ha, 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 Dad, you, you, you are wrong. <laughs> Friday night I was teaching, I gave a reference from Galatians 4. I said verse 24. Verse 20, 24 or 28. I said 24, I think it was 28. And she put on that, you were, <laughs> you got it wrong. So let me make sure I got this right. When I said Joshua 24, mm -hmm. verse two, I said verse two or verse three. All right, let's do both. Then that way, nobody can tell. Unto the people and unto, please help me, and unto her, her gods. Is that idolatry? Idol worship? Yes? Okay. Return after your sister-in-law. Okay. So verse 16. Just go down, please. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to return from following after you. For where you go, I will go. Everybody with me? Yeah. Please? Okay. And where you live or you stay or dwell or lodge, I will lodge. You ever been to a wedding and heard that? Yeah? Okay. People, you know, find that one to another. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Yes. Amen. Remember Thomas saying to Jesus, you're, you're the Lord, my God. Right, when Jesus showed him his hands, mm -hmm. Thomas, disciple, mm -hmm. New Testament Thomas, yes. The same thing, this lady is saying here. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Yes? yes? So would you say that at this point, she's making a confession of faith in Jehovah, yes. in the Lord God of the Israelites? Yes. Amen. Could we then bring that confession of faith in God into the New Testament where we find in Romans 10, 9 and 10 with our hearts we believe, with our mouth we confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes. Is it fair to say that that is what she was doing? Yes. Amen? Amen. All right. So Ruth says, I'm not going to return to idolatry. I will follow Jesus. I will follow God. Mm -hmm. That was the Old Testament. New Testament would be I follow who? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So she makes a confession of faith. Please notice that her background was a background of idolatry, idol worship. Amen? Same as Joshua 24, we saw in verses 2 and 3, was it? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Joshua. In Joshua 24, verses 2 and 3, we saw that God took Abraham from a background of idolatry. 
So what I'm teaching you from the Bible, God's word, to Christians is this. From today, never believe me or any bishop, archbishop. It doesn't matter what our titles are. If we tell you that you have idolatry in your background, so you cannot prosper or your career, you know, you can't rise high or your marriage will not succeed or whatever, don't believe us. Don't be impressed by our titles and our charisma and our personalities. Be impressed by God's word. Please. Amen. Please. Please. What, what, what would it take for you to be free from fear? Ladies and gentlemen, people have church meetings. They write books. They do CDs. They have devotionals on generational curses. It is not biblical. It does not exist anymore under the new covenant. It doesn't exist. Amen. God is the one who said, I will cut it out and I will not give you the opportunity to say that some of this problem is because of a generational curse. God said it. And pastors, we defy God and tell people they cannot be free because of this, because of that. Today I'm telling you, God is your hope. Amen. God is your trust. Amen. And God specializes in visit, visiting people who have all kinds of issues. You think you are messed up? God says, I love you. Now watch me come into your life to save you. Amen. You will change your history and you begin to establish new landmarks in your family. Drug addiction is over. Yeah. Your family will be known as a family full of professors, full of ministers of God, full of lovers and not haters. Amen. In Jesus' name, yes. it will come to pass. Your family will be known as a wealthy family that sponsors whole children in yes. cities to go to college. I yes. declare it in Jesus' name. Let it come to pass. Amen. Please give us Joshua 24 and verse 3 again. Can I flow? Yeah. All right, so let's go. Joshua 24, verse 3. Let's leave Ruth and go to Joshua 24, verse 3. Media. Wake up. Thank you. Praise God. Joshua 24, verse 3. Verse 3. Just, just verse 3. So it's bold. Please. I, I beg of you, I plead with you. I know sometimes I'm a little too, because I'm going and I want you to come. So it sounds like I'm being harsh, but forgive me. Let's go. Joshua 24, 3. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood. That is where they worship idols. And I led him throughout all the land of Canaan. And I multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. Out of idolatry, God called Abraham and God multiplied him. I stand to declare that God will multiply you this year. Amen. God will increase you Hallelujah. in Jesus' name. And he said, I gave him Isaac. Praise God. Now let's go to Galatians 4. Let me show you your generational blessing. This time, I will not let my baby girl tell me I was wrong. So, Galatians 4, the last part, he said, I gave him who? Isaac. Isaac. Everybody, that's important. I gave him Isaac. Isaac. Now, Galatians 4, verse 28. Galatians 4, 28. Now, we, everybody say we. We. Brethren. So, that's the Christians he's talking to, Yes. Sisters and brothers in Christ. As who was? Isaac, Isaac was. Didn't God say, I gave Abraham Isaac. Isaac? Okay. As Isaac was, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. promise. 
So when God gave Isaac to Abraham, God had who in mind, from what I'm teaching now, don't let me tell you, you got it. God had who in mind? He had you in mind. Because he says, as Isaac was, so are we. Amen. Do you see this? Amen. Do you see this? Give us Galatians 4, verse 16. Uh, okay, sorry. I'm wrong. Go, go to Galatians 3, 16. Galatians 3, 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not and to seeds as of many, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. Praise the Lord. All right, I'm going to need two gentlemen. To come to represent Abraham and the sea. Please, any two at all who don't mind coming up. Uh, all right. Okay. No, I, I, I'll need, uh, thank you for being gracious, but I need a gentleman. I need this because uh, he's referring to males, but I appreciate you. Praise God. Amen. Because she saw that even the gentlemen were not moving. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, God said to Abraham, you just represent Abraham, and to Abraham's seed. So when God spoke to Abraham, God had Abraham in mind, and who else in mind? No, no, let's just stay with the scripture. Okay. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. So to how many people is God making the promises? Was it to Abraham only? No. No, <laughs> to Abraham and his seed. So let's say that this brother is Abraham mm -hmm. and this brother is the seed. Fair enough? Yep. We're good? Yeah. Okay. He did not say seeds. So God wasn't talking about more than one, seeds, plural. He explains it as of many. If he says seeds, yeah. it's more than one. But as of one, if he says seed and to thy seed, that's just one. And that seed is who? Christ. Christ. So the day God called Abraham from Ur of the Chaldeans, Babylon. Mm -hmm. you know, have you ever had problem in your family? Do you know any family that has like horrible things? According to what I'm teaching you from God's word, you were a candidate for God's divine visitation. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what you have to believe. Amen. Not that you are cursed. Not what put you into that mess. Not, not all that. But look to where God is taking you. Amen. Amen. That is what will bring the change. Amen. That's how we change families, ladies and gentlemen. That is how we change communities. I know there are problems. In America, I'm telling you, if America has problems, you have no idea what other people in the world suffer. You know, I have lived here all my adult life. And my light has never gone off. I mean light, uh, electricity. The water has never gone off. There are some places, millions of people have no electricity. Mm -hmm. Oh, water, thank you. We support a young man who left New York. He is all over Africa and different places that don't have water to give them good, clean water. Amen. And that's what he's devoted his life to do. He's not even born again. And laughing, spirit of love. God's calling us, ladies and gentlemen, to rise up. Amen. Let God be your hope. Amen. No matter what you're going through this year, I saw the power of God coming to somebody who was strong. God said, I'll make you stronger. Amen. 
receive it. We need divine power. We need God. Amen. So God spoke to Abraham and Abraham's seed. Amen. Uh, if you can stay right here for a moment for me. Please give us Galatians 4, verse 29. Galatians 4, verse 29. Today I'm not doing well. Forgive me. Yes, yes. Yes. When you get born again, the enemy will fight everything that God wants to do in your life. Can we stay for a moment? Remember I showed you that as Isaac was, so are we? Mm -hmm. Okay. In Galatians 4, 29, but as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the spirit, even so it is now. In the, here, the one who was born after the flesh was Ishmael. The one who was born after the spirit is Isaac. Who who is Isaac today? We are. As Isaac was, so are we. Amen. In Isaac's time, who persecuted him? Ishmael. Is there persecution today according to the scripture? Yes. So even though God has said that you are a child of promise, that was you were you were Abraham, right? Yeah. Okay. And then you are Christ. Yeah, you are Christ, the seed. Yes, sir? Yeah. Okay. So even though God has said that you are a child of promise, the enemy will persecute, will persecute you. You understand this? But you, like Isaac, as Isaac was so weak, you, like Isaac, you have to make God your hope. And keep pressing on. Never give up. Keep pushing forward. No matter what. Keep pushing forward. Even if you fail, get up and push forward. Yes. Amen. 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 So Isaac, he starts his business, his farming business. And his enemy, called the Philistines, they come and fight him. Isaac doesn't stop. Isaac continues. Amen. And he goes to another place moves to another place, continues his business. And the enemy comes and he fights him. But the man still has this hope. I have been given a promise. I have been given a promise. God said you bless me. He said it to my father Abraham and he said it to me. He said you bless me. So he keeps on with that promise. Keep on with the business. But maybe for you, it's not a, the opposition is not the area of your business. It may be in the area of your health. It may be in the area of your marriage. It may be, I don't know, but it doesn't matter what. Keep moving forward. So Isaac moves again. And he gets to this place where the Philistines trouble him no more. And Isaac and his servants who work in his field, they said, oh, we have come to a good place, a large place. God has enlarged us. I'm going to push you guys a little bit. <laughs> God has made room for us. Amen. We'll call this place Rehoboth. Amen. You know Rehoboth, Maryland? That's where the name came from. Amen. One day, I'll pray that a uh, uh, Reverend Janice would preach to us about freedom. Is it freedom, Pennsylvania? Or, or new, new freedom? New? Is it new freedom? New, new, new. America is a beautiful place. They have all these places that have names from the Bible. Mm -hmm. Rehoboth, Maryland. Rehoboth means, you guys, get out of my space. Freedom. I'm spreading to the left. I'm spreading to the right. We are... Isaac. Yeah. 
There is a generational blessing. Hallelujah. Not a curse. Hallelujah. So look at that. Let God be your hope. Let that promise. Mm -hmm. You see, the promise is your hope. Mm -hmm. The word, Bishop, is that what you taught? The word of God is what? Your hope. Amen. He shows you the picture and he says, this is where I'm taking you. Keep your eyes on it. Hallelujah. Not on the failed marriage. Not on the bankrupted business. Not on the this. And people will always take you back. Well, you are like this. You are people who do that. People always want to talk about what you failed, what you did wrong, what you you keep your eyes on God. Amen. 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 Okay. So a persecution will come. But keep your eyes on the promise. Amen. That's right. God told you, God told Abraham, He said, I'll bless you, you shall be a blessing. And God said to him, Those who curse you, I will curse them. That tells you right there, Abraham, you're going to have some battles. God never told anybody. That it's like when you, you we do this typical uh, altar call, come to Christ, everything will be all right. No, that's not an altar call. Come to Christ, your sins will be washed away. That is altar call. You receive Jesus as your Savior, and you become born again. But don't tell somebody that everything, you know, you never have a problem. How are they going to get a miracle if there's never a problem? You have a testimony if there's never a test. <laughs> you lying to people, you know. So the slightest problem people have, they're like, oh, this Christianity stuff doesn't even work. No, it works. Amen. So God said to you, Abraham, I'll make you a blessing. Amen. And I will bless those who bless you, but I'll curse those who curse you. And when God said that to you, God was saying that to your son, your seed, to your children. Amen. That seed is Christ. But ladies and gentlemen, God didn't say that to Abraham and his seed Christ for the sake of Christ. Never. He said it for your sake. Because Jesus, he was in heaven. He didn't need any blessing. He had it all. So when God said, Abraham, I bless you and your seed, God was actually speaking to you. But he, Christ, you'll be represented in Christ. You understand this? Amen. I want to thank you for your patience. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. You get this? Okay. Now take me back to Galatians 3, verse 8. Galatians 3 verse 8. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. God would justify the heathen. I want you to note the word heathen. Heathen or Gentiles. People who are not born again. The Bible is very interesting, very fascinating. And I want to make this point to you which has not been emphasized to us. But I'm going to say it in such a way that initially when you hear it, you might think, what's pastor saying? All right? Then I explain myself. Listen, the gospel was actually written for Gentiles. It was written for us. It was written for us. The New Testament, we Gentiles are the focus of the New Testament. All right? I said, that's where you go. What's pastor saying? Are the Jews excluded? No. The Jews have always had God. The Israelites had God. We didn't have him. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So God wrote something to include us. You and I get it. That's Amen. what I mean. Amen. They, they were already cool. They had him. You and I were like Ruth. Excluded. We're like Abraham was before he got his call. We followed idolatry. And our lives were messed up. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when God wrote the gospel, he was thinking more about us than about the Jews. The point I'm making is that they, they always had him. We didn't. So God was saying, I'm going to include you. Do you get it now? Right. So after today's teaching, when you're studying the Old Testament, look for pictures where God begins to draw, include the heathen, the Gentiles. Are you seeing that? Oh. Yeah. But the thing is that because the Old Testament was all about the Israelites, and it was just here and there that we were sprinkled in, they didn't, the Israelites did not see it. They didn't catch on it, onto it, because the majority of it was about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here and there, when God just sprinkled something in about us, they didn't take note of it. Then comes the New Testament, which is the unfolding, the expanding of those little sprinklings that he put in the Old Testament about the heathen. Look at the scripture again. Look at this. And the scripture foreseen that God would justify the who? Heathen. He didn't say foreseen that God would justify the Jews. I rest my case. Amen. <laughs> Do you see what the Bible is doing? Yeah. God would justify the heathen. He didn't say God would justify the Jews. Come on now. I'm not saying that the Jews did not need justification. They had God. Mm -hmm. They feel like they felt like we're cool. We got it made. God was actually telling them, you also have to come to me through Yeshua HaMashiach. Mm -hmm. Amen. But these people who are out, out of the covenant, out of the promises, they were not part of the covenant of Israel, of the promises, they are also mine. Amen. That's why in John 10 he said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I would bring, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. The Mormons, uh, Latter-day Saints, mm -hmm. uh, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, or whatever they call the Mormons, they messed up over there. Then John 10, where it says, other sheep I have, the Mormons say that that other sheep is them. Mm -hmm. No, that other sheep, this is not Utah. Utah? Utah? America? No. Utah? Okay. Yeah, you sound like me, sure. When I talk, she says, that is this. They say it this way. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. So I thought that's what I said. <laughs> but when you said it, it sounds different. <laughs> it sounds rich. I think it's good. Okay. All right. So I won't mention the state, but where are the moments at? That place? Okay. In John 10, Jesus said, other sheep I have which are not of this fold, this Jewish fold, mm -hmm. but I'm going to bring them. The other sheep refer to the Gentiles. We are all God's people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Amen. So he died to bring us in, that there'll be one fold and one shepherd. Amen. Seen, for seeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, he preached the gospel to Abraham. Amen. Amen. Ah, you gotta forgive me. I'm gonna have you to come back. Father Abraham and uh, Brother Jesus. Let's see. So, first of all, to Father Abraham, watch this. It says, God preached the gospel to Abraham, saying, everybody follow. God preached the gospel to Abraham, saying, in you shall all nations be blessed. So according to Galatians 3.8, what is the gospel? 
According to Galatians 3 8, God preached the gospel to Abraham, saying, saying what? The gospel. So what's the gospel? According to Galatians 3 8, in, the, in you shall all nations, shall all nations be, blessed. be blessed. Hallelujah. That's the gospel. Thank you. That, that's it. That's what he said. Even if we don't understand it, that is still what he said. You see, this is how you have to treat the Bible to understand it. Start from what, what he said. Then through what he said, run through the thread of scripture from what he said and let the scripture explain what he said. In you shall all nations be blessed. In you, Abraham, all nations shall be blessed. So God spoke <laughs> blessings yeah. on everybody. Amen. And the blessings were supposed to start from who? Abraham. Abraham. That's right. Amen. Yeah. You get this? Yeah. Then God gave Abraham a son of promise called Isaac. Isaac. So that means the blessing continued in Isaac. It still said, in you shall all nations be blessed. So when he came to Isaac, it was the same thing. So God repeated to Isaac, all right, Isaac, you are blessed and you represent those that are blessed. Amen. I'm going to run through that next week. We're going to see it. Amen. Amen. All right. Then Isaac had Jacob and Esau. But the promise continued through Jacob's line. Amen. All right. Should I do this now? No, we'll do that next week. So Jacob was also blessed. So if I could call someone else to represent Jacob, please come, sir. Come. Jacob. I'm not going to turn to the scriptures. We'll do that next week, but come. Amen. Come like you're Jacob. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Hey, you see how blessed he is? He looks all golden. And all right. So the blessing continued in Jacob. Amen. We'll look at that next week. Run through the scriptures. It's a make God deliberately each to each person. He kept saying it. Right. Kept repeating it. In you shall all nations be blessed. Amen. Amen. And then from Jacob it went to Judah. And God repeated it in Judah. Right. Then from Judah it went to King David. And God repeated it in King David. In fact, before it went to King David, it went to David's father, Jesse. Yes. Right, Professor? Yes. A root shall come out of Jesse. And in him shall the nations be blessed. Okay. Amen. Amen. Who gave us Jesse? Obed gave us Jesse. But who gave us Obed? Ruth and Boaz. The same Ruth who was from idolatry mm -hmm. that I showed you today, who represents us. Break it down, Sam. Break it down. Amen. So when God brought Ruth in the picture, God was talking about us, the heathen. But in fact, just before God brought Ruth into the picture, there was Rahab, who was the first Gentile to be brought in. And Rahab was a prostitute. You, you can't, I know some, okay, you can be seated, thank you. I know some versions have tried to soften it, but you can't. God knew that they tried to soften it. So God wrote three times in the Bible, she is a prostitute. <laughs> And it was not to shame her. It was to glorify God. It was to say that, I don't care what your past is. I will change your life and bless you. In James chapter 2, the Bible says, Rahab the harlot. I think maybe verse 25 it was, James 2, 25. The Bible called her, Rahab the harlot or the prostitute. In Hebrews 11, 33, is it? 
He, God called her again, bring her to Harlem. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Media. Look at this. James 2.25. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Rahab the harlot was justified by works. By works. All right. Give me Hebrews 11. 33. I think. Nah. Hebrews 11.31. Let me see, 31. Yes. 31. Yes. yes, thank you. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with those who believed not Amen. when she received the spies with peace. So Rahab is called a harlot twice in the New Testament. All right? But Hebrews 11 31 says she had faith, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And James 2 25 said, she had works because faith without works is dead. We are saved by faith, but after you're saved, there will be works that show that you are saved. Yes? Yes. All right. So when you're saved, righteousness will show that you are saved. When you're saved, healing will come forth to show you are saved. When you're saved, prosperity will come forth to show that you are saved. In other words, you're delivered from poverty because you are saved. Amen. Amen. You get this? Okay, let me try to just then put it all together. Take me to Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. 3.29? Yes. Yes. All right, this time, just, just uh, King George, please come. <laughs> today, today uh, you, you've had a lot of exercise. <laughs> Thank you. And if you belong to Christ, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen. Remember, God spoke to Abraham and his seed. Who was the seed? Christ. Now it says, if you belong to Christ, so this is Christ. He was Abraham's seed. Remember Abraham? At the top. Abraham. So you can remember the picture. So God said, so I'm, I'm just being represented God. So I say to Abraham, in you shall all the nations be blessed. All right? I'm making this promise to you and to your seed. Amen. If you belong to Christ, if you be Christ, if you are his, then you are Abraham's seed. So when God was speaking to Abraham, to Abraham himself about his seed, God was speaking according to Galatians 3.29, to whom? If you are Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Yeah. And as according to the promise. So when God made promise to Abraham and to Abraham's seed, According to Galatians 3.29, to whom was God speaking? To the heirs. Who are the heirs? We are. You weren't there, but it was good as done. Amen. Amen. Please stay. Let me just give people another visual picture. Brother Emmanuel, come. Give you another picture. Get ready for prayer. You are going higher today. Amen. Give you another picture. Stephen, can you come? Please, give me Hebrews 7. Uh, this time, I got to look for this one. Hebrews 7. I want to show you this picture. Hebrews 7. Hmm. Verse 9. And verse 10. Hebrews 7 verse 9. And as I may so say, Levi, Levi, but I call him Levi. Levitical order, the Levitical priesthood. Levi, or Levi also, who in America we say Levi, but his name is Levi. Levi, who, who also, who received tithes, paid tithes in Abraham. 
for he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. So we're going to start from Abraham. So this is Abraham. All right. Melchizedek meets Abraham coming from war. He has a victory. And Melchizedek brings bread and wine, representing communion, and serves it to Abraham, blesses him. And Abraham gives tithes to Melchizedek. Yes? yes? This scripture just told us when Abraham gave the tithe, Levi had paid the tithe. All right? But Abraham had a son called Isaac. You got to come closer. So Abraham had a son called Isaac. Then Isaac had a son called Jacob. Yes? Jacob had 12 sons and a daughter. The son who was the priest, the head of the priest was Levi. The day Abraham paid tithes, according to Hebrews, God says that Levi paid the tithes. Though he, had, he was not yet born, he was inside Abraham. Look at God. Look at God. How far down God sees the generations of World Missions Ministries people Amen. who are listening to this word and receiving it. Yes. That God said, Abraham, Tom's generation, if you get it, I already see your fourth generation blessed. Yes. Hallelujah. He was not born yet, but he was in the strength, the loins of Abraham. Father, bless the people of God Hallelujah. to the third and fourth generation. Guaranteed. So that in the government of family, your family will stand high. In the government of church work, mission work, your family will stand high. In human governments, law and government, your family will stand high. Hallelujah. In business and finance, your family will stand up. In media, in the arts and entertainment, your family will stand up. Amen. In the governments that rule upon the earth, that the government of God through you Amen. will rule over them. Somebody give yes. God yes. praise. Yes. Bless you. Amen. God bless you. <laughs> Father, bless the people. Hallelujah. Bless the people. Bless the people. As they make you their hope today. And bless their generations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let God be your hope today. Let God be your hope today. As we get ready to pray, I want you to picture this with me. The first person, Gentile, God used that we saw today who represented all of us was Rahab, the harlot. <laughs> she is in the hall of fame of the faithful ones today. Hebrews 11 is the hall of fame mm -hmm. of the faithful ones. God says, regardless of your history, I will save you and your family. God saved Rahab and her family. Can you see new landmarks established for you and your family? Yes. Receive it today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it today. In the name of Jesus. Rahab received the spies with peace. Rahab said something similar to what Ruth said, which you saw today. Your God will be my God. Yeah. Rahab said, I believe that God has given you the city of Jericho. I believe this. Please, when you come to take over the city, don't kill me. Save me alive. 
And the spies said to Rahab, because you have helped us, we shall help you. But we want you to do one thing. We want you to put this red cord, red rope, put this red rope in your window. When we come to attack Jericho and we see that red cord, that red thread, that red rope, we we'll know that's your house. And we're going to bring you all out alive. Amen. Amen. That red rope is Jesus Christ. Amen. That red cord is Jesus Christ. The whole world may be going down, but you and your house will stand. Amen. I thank God that God used, not the example of somebody who was in church, God used the example of a prostitute. And God said, your past is not what concerns me. It is what I want to do with your life. Amen. What I'm going to do with your life. Rahab became the mother of Boaz. The Bible says Boaz was dignified, was an honorable man. Look at this. His mother had a background of prostitution. Yet the next generation is honorable. I want us to believe God today for white families, for black families, for brown families, for red families, and I'm, I'm getting ready to pray for you, but I want to make it relevant and, and make it real, you know, because in America, I know we have issues. There's people who are too much into color. So I let me just say that, make it real, so you can relate to it and receive. this woman from prostitution and her son was honorable and dignified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very next generation. This is what God is doing today. Amen. I want you to believe God with me. Glory. Sister Pat, Rashanda's life has changed forever. Amen. She is like Boaz. Boaz was, Boaz was wealthy. Mm -hmm. Do you know sometimes it's because of poverty that some women are driven to prostitution? Yeah. Do you know that sometimes? Her son was wealthy. Fabulously wealthy. And a very honorable person. Where is generational curse? It doesn't even come in. The mother was a prostitute. The son is honorable. But some minister will tell you, because your mother was a prostitute, well, that spirit is running in your family. It is not. I am telling you, it is not. When God steps in, the spirit is not in your family. Black families can change in these United States. I'm tired of colors. And I'm tired of this. There's, there's drug abuse. There's no education. People are going to pray. I'm tired of that. Let God be your hope. So I pray today for you, the Boaz generation. Use you as a point of contact. I pray for you. Just face me, please. I know you're taller than me, but it's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. You please kneel. Let me make it easier for you. Just kneel down. Kneel. Go ahead and kneel. It's all right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, that's also a good posture yes. sometimes. It's a, a posture of, you know, humility. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Lord. Yes. You saw Levi when Abraham paid tithes. I pray that your eyes will be on the youth in our generation as I use Stephen as a point of contact in prayer for them, for Stephen himself and for the youth. Make them honorable, like Boaz, dignified, men of dignity and honor, and men of substance of great wealth in the name of Jesus. You use Boaz to produce Obed, Boaz and Ruth to produce Obed. And from Obed, Jesse came, and from Jesse, David came, and from David, Christ came, and from Christ, we are saved. Bless Stephen, bless the young people. 
young people everywhere, in our Florida Assembly, the Ghana Church, people who join with us online, bless them, change their lives, all of them, in the name of the Lord Jesus, all of them, in Jesus' name. What you did for Rea, oh God, thank you. Put these young people in, the, in your hall of fame, in the name of Jesus Christ, of faithful people, in Jesus' name. And make them great in the governmental centers of the world. Let the word of Christ go forth through them to establish your kingdom. In families, godly families, in church and missionary work, in business and finance, in law and government, let it be. In the arts, in entertainment, in media, let it be, Lord. In education, let it be. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. And now for all of us, for all of us, for everybody, all of us, like Rahab, we receive deliverance from any fiery trial. The Jerichos of this world that are going down, that are burning, we don't burn with the Jerichos of this world. In the name of Jesus, we come into liberty. We come into liberty. Everybody receive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Another vision the Lord gave me yesterday, yesterday, today is Sunday, yesterday, is, represents you, represents me. We're, we're advancing together with Jesus and there was a troop in front of you coming against you. But as you were coming and they saw that the Lord was with you, the, the way opened, they just, they, they just opened. The troop in front just opened and you went through. God showed me that in a vision. Hallelujah. But more importantly, the Bible says, by your God, you will leap over walls and you break through the troop. Amen. I saw that yesterday, mm. yesterday morning. I saw two visions yesterday morning. One was of uh, somebody who visits another person in a facility, like a hospital facility. Uh, it's, like, you, 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 it's, it's almost like a place where they have like uh, old people's uh, senior citizens mm -hmm. center. And then there was also a mental health facility as part of it, you know, and the person would usually visit that place, visit the person. But uh, this particular facility, close to it, close to this particular facility, so that you, the person that it applies to, so you would know it's you, close to that uh, hospital health facility, there is also a place where bikers congregate, bike riders, and I saw them in leather outfits, you know. And the bike, you know, they are Christian, even Bike Riders Association, they are Christians, you know, bike riders are cool. But anyway, this particular day, though, they came to attack this person because they had, they had seen, they know your uh, habit, they know your pattern. You come to visit and they watched. Uh, so they went to attack the person. Uh, but God showed me the deliverance. God showed me uh, that it, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. Because you, the, you heard God's voice and you went with someone else that day that they had planned to attack. So when they saw that you were not alone, they couldn't attack you. Now that particular facility, the parking area closest to the mental health part 
is where you usually park because there are not a lot of cars there. And you just have this idea that people open their cars and it hits your car, mm. your car, the body of your car. So you like parking where there are not a lot of cars. And in that particular facility, the mental health area is where you like to park because there are often not a whole lot of cars there. And these particular bikers have noticed that that place was quiet and they were gonna attack you there. But you heard a voice of God not to go there alone or go there at your usual time. Yeah. Uh, so what they planned did not happen. God showed me that yesterday. Amen. And the other vision he showed me was uh, the body of Christ going through the truth that was gathered before you. So whatever you are faced with right now, you have already gone through. Amen. Amen. You're going through. Amen. Let it be your expectation that what you want, you will get. Amen. You will get. Hallelujah. So I just want you, if I can, uh, if you will bear with me before I pray the final prayer. Just uh, symbolically, just do it the way that is comfortable for you. I don't want to put you under any stress or anything, but how it's comfortable for you. You know, just act like, you know, you are holding a rope, the cord that represents Jesus, based on Rahab, so that I can pray, we can pray together, please. Uh, that cord that Rahab put in the window, it was the same cord that she put there previously for the spies to climb down out of her house and run away from the soldiers who were had been sent to attack them. Are you guys okay? You good? All right. And that same cord that the soldiers used to escape. You see, they held onto the rope, went down the window, and they escaped. It's the same cord that Rahab put in the window that was the cord of her deliverance. It represents Jesus. So let Jesus be your hope. It, it doesn't make sense to you? It's the cord. So let, let's say that somebody is uh, like drowning and you know, the rescue squad bring in the cord or something, and they tell him, hold on to this, and we'll pull you. All right. That cord, that's Jesus to bring you salvation. Amen. You see, sometimes there's flood, or there's some places burning, and somebody's there by themselves, surrounded by fire, and they bring a chopper, and they bring a rope or something, and tell them, hold on to it, and we'll pull you out. All right. That's your salvation. So, however it's comfortable for you, just before we pray, just act like you're holding on to the rope, Jesus, the cord. All right? Just your own way. I don't want to make you feel like just your own way, but let's act it out. Hold on to a cord, Jesus. The spies held on to the cord. They went down and they ran away. They escaped. They were saved. That was the cord that Rahab held on to for salvation for her and her house. Lord, thank you. We believe in our hearts. We believe in our hearts. And by faith, we acted out. Rahab received by faith and was justified by faith, according to Hebrews 11. James 2 says justified by works also. So Lord, now we, we add our faith to our works hold on to the rope of salvation. Jesus, you are our hope. Hope. I thank you, Lord, that everybody comes out of any burning situation, any fiery situation, they are saved. They are delivered. Thank you. Thank you. Whatever sought to burn the gates of their lives, burn down the walls of protection, for our daughters and our sons. Today we hold on to the rope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I feel it. The release is here. The deliverance is here. Receive it and give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Like Rahab, we see Jesus hold up to you as our Savior. Like Ruth, reject whatever idolatry, whatever sin, we hold on to God. You are our hope. In Jesus' name. Reject the wrong teachings. We reject generational curses. And we hold on to generational blessings. Forget the things behind. We press on to what you have for us. Thank you. I receive my health. I receive vigor. I receive vitality. I receive a blessing. Whatever it is, please confess and declare it with me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You say it. I receive it. Everybody. Just pray, thank God for it, salvation, healing, deliverance, victory. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray and receive it? In the name of Jesus, receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus, I receive Christ as Lord. I receive Christ as deliverer. I receive Christ as my prosperer. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall never lack or want this year. I receive that in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive that in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, one more vision. God showed me this one this morning. One more. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, You know how, uh, you ever seen on TV when they try to explain or show us uh, like brain and brain connections? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I saw, have you ever seen a mushroom, one mushroom? Okay, but I saw like a lot of, like what looked like a lot of mushrooms, right, a lot of them. And so you have a base and then you have coming out, you have a shooting yeah. out to all these, just shooting out. So if you can imagine like broccoli, the stalk of broccoli, you know, so you hold like the stem, but then it shoots out. Okay, so imagine a lot of it, right, a lot of it. And the power of God hit it and just came, mm. just came alive like that. God is healing minds, brains. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. God's healing people's brains. Amen. The brain itself. Amen. And energizing and giving you life. It might be some person needs that touch. Amen. Receive that for yourself. But for all of us, let's receive it. You know, Ephesians 1, the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Quicken every part of you. Yes. Romans 8, 11, we saw it earlier. Make your mortal body strong. Thank you. Amen. So God, quicken your memory. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know, really, but everything with the brain. Thank you, Lord. Whatever. Thank you. Let's just receive it. Thank you, Praise God. So I will not be forgetful. Uh, if it's studying, I'll be smart. I'll be the head. You know, God, quicken me. You understand? So I just, I just told you the vision, but we're going to pray, and whatever God needs to do for anybody, we say, Lord, do it. Thank you. If it's God driving out forgetfulness, Amen. let him do it. Thank you, Lord. Um, you understand? Yes. Yeah. There are some brain diseases. You won't have the brain diseases. Amen. I don't know what they're called. It's not my field. I'm a pastor, and I'm just sharing you, with you spiritually what I saw. But whatever these things are, in the natural, whatever they are called, may the Lord take care of them. In Jesus' name, the Lord take care of them. Make you sharp in your mind. Make you sharp in your mind. Praise God. When you're in business meetings, may you be quick to catch on things, you know, so nobody deceives you. Maybe you're a singer, you put on an album, but you're in a meeting and they want to put, pull the wool over your eyes. May you, you know, be quick. I don't know, but Lord, do it. Father, thank you for what you showed me. Those stems, like a brain stems and all the connections. 
whatever it is that people need, we receive by faith a salvation, healing from forgetfulness, uh, disorders of the brain, the whatever, in the name of Jesus. Dementia, you said dementia? All right, in Jesus' name, thank you. Praise God. Thank you for healing from dementia. Somebody give me a Alzheimer's, thank you, in the name of Jesus. Healing from Alzheimer's. Schizophrenia. People help me. Schizophrenia. Thank you for healing from schizophrenia. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So you're getting this. Good. Bipolar. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody said depression. In the name of Jesus. Somebody said anxiety. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I feel better. Hallelujah. Fear. Fear. In the name of Jesus, we are free. In Jesus' name. Attention Somebody deficit. Says, Failure ADHD. in the name of Jesus Christ. ADHD. 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 Yes. What's that one too? Attention one, deficit. Wow. Attention deficit? Yeah. Was the H hype or something? Yeah. Oh, wow. Lord, thank you. What, whatever they are, Lord, we receive deliverance. We, receive deliverance. we pray for people who need that. Yeah. HD. ADHD. ADHD. Thank you for delivering people from that. Children, young yeah, people have that, children. Thank you for delivering them. Autism, in Jesus' name. Mental retardation. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Brain aneurysms. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Ladies and gentlemen, I saw a lot of them, you know. I saw a lot of them. Like you see a lot of broccoli. Yeah. But a lot. Hypertension. So all these things. Hyper. Hypertension. Hypertension, you yeah. said. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Schizophrenia. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for my brothers who are here standing with me. We stand in agreement. In Jesus' name. I thank you for the church flowing with the Holy Spirit right now. Hold somebody's hand in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. I join with the pastors and the ministers. And we pray for the congregation. We pray for the people of God. We pray for people in Florida, in Ghana, social media who are joining us. Family members who are dealing with children with autism, uh, ADHD, Alzheimer's, dementia. Father, all the things that your people mention and people think we don't know of in the name of Jesus. Chronic headaches in Jesus' name. What is that headache that is like one part of your head? Migraine. Migraine. Thank you, Father. Lord, what you showed me, we stand as a congregation and we pray that you free people from these things. Problems in the mind and, and with your brain. Lord, help. Save deliver. May the blood of Jesus purify minds in the name of Jesus. Let people walk in the mind of Christ. With the mind of Christ and in the mind of Christ. Heal brains just as you use doctors in the natural to help people. Brain surgeons to help people. We know that supernaturally your power is even greater. So we pray today in Jesus mighty name. For deliverance from head trauma. Yes, head trauma. Maybe from an accident. We ask, Lord, for deliverance, for healing. In Jesus' name. Fear, failure, depression. All kinds of problems with the brain and the head and the mind. Lord, we give you praise today. In Jesus' name. 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 And now we pray in the Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will help us to pray according to your perfect will. In the name of Jesus. So now, Lord, we all pray to you in the Spirit. You hear us. You understand. In Jesus' name. So no one needs an interpretation. We all pray to you now. Bandolo brosika. Mikriatolo brosteke. 
Mandele bretu za taba atakaya. Ileita za itali inabradush taba handu zikir. In the name of Jesus. 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 Save Lord. Heal Lord. Deliver Lord. And grant peace and mental health and wholeness to all in Jesus name by the faith of God we call it done give all of us rest let all your people rest let all the families represented in this service today online in person in Florida everywhere let them rest May you be blessed even to the fourth generation. As Levi was blessed in Abraham, may you be blessed and your generations, all generations, for God's glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Glory to God. That's good. Oh, thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's so good. Yes. Yes. God is so good.